Once upon a time, the idea of a fleet of electric cars travelling any huge distance was met with derisive laughing, but these days, it's fairly common to see automakers announce that the total distance amassed by customers' cars since launch is in the billions of kilometres or miles range. Chinese firm NIO is the latest to join that club, announcing on Friday last week that its fleet has covered 2 billion kilometres, 1.2 billion miles, since it launched its first electric model. While it took the company's customers 1,075 days to reach this milestone, which is just under three years, it is really worth noting that the second of those 2 billion kilometres was reached in just 229 days. One of the reasons for that accelerated odometer rollover was increased use of NEO's battery swap stations. On average, one battery swap takes place for every 1,000 kilometres, 620 miles, driven by its customers. Reuters has reported that Tesla is in talks with EVE Energy to see the Chinese battery maker become the second provider of lithium-ion phosphate, or LFP, batteries for Tesla's standard range cars. LFP batteries aren't as energy dense as the batteries used in most electric cars today, but they don't require nickel, the supply of which is a bottleneck in current battery production, or cobalt, which is expensive, rare, and comes with some serious human rights concerns. Tesla already acquires LFP batteries from Cattle, and adding another provider will be what Reuters reports a source describing as a checks and balance against relying on one firm. EVE Energy is working to meet Tesla's brand standards, and if negotiations go well, its batteries could be in Chinese-built Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y cars in about six months. The company already supplies LFP batteries to Xpeng and has announced partnerships with both BMW and Daimler. The International Energy Agency, or IEA, is an intergovernmental advisory organisation looking at the global energy ecosystem and providing guidance for countries to maintain their energy security and stability. With that in mind, its mandate has shifted over the years to include mitigation of anthropogenic climate change and plotting a course to a cleaner, greener future. Now, in a brand new report, the IEA says that if the global output of greenhouse gases is going to be net zero by 2050, the development of new oil and natural gas projects needs to stop immediately, and the sale of new vehicles that aren't zero emissions has to end by 2035. It represents a massive disruption of the energy energy around the world, in which the IEA projects could cost 5 million jobs. At the same time, the organisation sees the potential for 30 million new jobs in the green energy sector. This report is a huge statement for an influential organisation, but whether the world takes notice is another question. Electrek is reporting that over 10,000 Tesla vehicles produced at its Fremont, California production facility are currently undeliverable due to a containment hold placed on them. The issue with the Model 3 and Model Y cars is reportedly quite fixable by Tesla's service team, but parts availability means that there isn't a clear timeline for when the vehicles will be ready for delivery to customers. The cars are apparently being shipped to delivery centres to await their final fix. We can't say for sure what's causing the availability issue for parts, but in its most recent Tesla quarterly earnings call, Elon Musk said the automaker had had, quote, some of the most difficult supply chain challenges that Tesla has ever experienced, and attributed the problem to multiple factors, including a global shortage of semiconductor chips and delays at shipping ports. With Tesla's notoriously challenging end of quarter delivery push just around the corner, the containment hold couldn't come at a worse time. Watch this space. It was back in January 2017 when Chinese electric car startup Faraday Future first showed the world its high-end all-electric semi-autonomous FF91. I was there at the reveal, and I saw the car spectacularly misbehave on stage. And since then, well, Faraday Future has missed just about every production goal and milestone it set itself. It's seen its founder and former CEO get into trouble with the Chinese government, and it's found itself in financial difficulty. But don't worry, this car company, which we'd all assumed had just quietly died, is back. I guess. This week, it revealed its latest product update, a full-size, voice-controlled, fold-down, 27-inch rear screen and built-in video cameras that can allow rear seat passengers in the FF91 to video conference while commuting. Because, you know, everyone needs to do that while their chauffeur drives them to work. I'm happy to see the company alive and kicking, but isn't it time we see a car? These things were meant to start deliveries three years ago. 
It was 2017 when we reported that hell had frozen over when Lamborghini showcased an electric concept car called the Terzo Millennio, a car that it said showcased a potential future for the brand. But since then, the company has remained steadfastly stuck in internal combustion engine land. I guess influence from parent company Volkswagen AG might be finally seeping through, though, because this week the company announced all of its models will be plug-in hybrid by 2024, as well as an all-electric model planned to be launched sometime after that. Yes, as purists rip their hair out, the replacements for the Huracan, Aventador and Urus will all get plug-in hybrid drivetrains married to either V12s, V10s and V8s respectively. But the all-electric model will, it's hinted, be a pure electric four-seater, two-door GT-like car. It's fantastic to see Lamborghini finally get on board, but we're not going to believe it until we see it and drive it. While many rural postal workers now use their own vehicles to deliver the mail, the US Postal Service still has a massive fleet in excess of 2,000 mail trucks, and they're starting to show their age. Earlier this year, defense contractor Oshkosh was awarded a $482 million contract to replace the fleet with brand new trucks. Rather than spec the entire fleet as EVs, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy said at the time that just 10% of the fleet would be electric, noting that any internal combustion engine trucks could be converted to electric at a later date. This was seemingly in contrast to President Biden's intentions to electrify the whole US government fleet. But now the House Oversight and Reform Committee has attached an additional $8 billion to the upcoming Postal Service Reform Act to ensure that all new postal vehicles are indeed fully electric. It would be a big and sensible move, but there's still a long way to go before it's reality, so watch this space. 